need some fuel. <laughs> hey, Julia. So tell me why you think I asked you to do this video. Um, because I was your favorite student. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, and most humble. And most humble. <laughs> I think probably because with the path that I'm taking for my career right now in CPA, um, it differs a little bit from what a lot of my peers are doing. Um, so yeah, I feel like that might be why. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's, we'll probably get into this, but there's oftentimes, and I think it's, it's, becoming less and less, you know, one path, one way. But I think there's still a lot of, you know, oh, I go into accounting. Oh, I do this. Oh, then I do this. And then the next three years looks like this. The next four years looks like this. And the next five years looks like this. And then I do this and this and this and die. And it's like, oh, well, that's, that's quite the predetermined path that somebody made when they were 18 and they signed up for university or, you know, we're in second yeah. year or third year and <laughs> declared a major. Uh, so yeah, absolutely. That's, that's one of the reasons um, why I asked you to do this video is to provide our third and fourth year uh, accounting students, accounting majors, possibly uh, possible accounting majors, possible, you know, to show people what's going on. And they're like, hmm, maybe um, that's not for me or um, one of the other reasons is because I know, uh, not to out you, but that you have so many uh, interests that you can find alignment with accounting, but aren't necessarily, you know, a love, a pure love for debits and credits. Would you say that's fair? I would say that's pretty accurate. Yeah. <laughs> One of my students uh, from the fall in IFA2 uh, towards the end asked me if AA2 had as many uh, credits and debits in it. And I just started laughing because I know that journal entries were not necessarily his favorites. And, and that's okay. Um, journal entries do not have to be anybody's favorites. In fact, if anybody was like, hey, I want a life of debits and credits, you know, it's a lot of time to invest in a Dell undergrad um, as well as prop, perhaps a CPA if you're loving debits and credits um, because it's rather what you can do with the debits and credits. So let's uh, introduce you. Uh, what have you been up to? When did you graduate? Uh, and what have you been doing since you graduated? Okay, so in case you guys didn't catch it before, I'm Julia. Um, I graduated from Dell as an accounting major in 2019. And since I graduated, I've been working full-time at Brookfield Asset Management in Toronto as a corporate accountant. Um, I did my third co-op there was lucky enough to be invited back full-time. So I started there in September and at the same time started my CPA journey. Um, and that's led me up until now. I'm still working at Brookfield. The scenery is a little bit different working from home, obviously, but um, yep, still working through my CPA. I'm just in the tail end of it now, so yeah. How about you tell us a little bit more about that? How did you choose to do your uh, CPA, your CPA education portion? Um, so for me, I chose not to do the graduate diploma in accounting um, the summer after graduation, which was maybe a regrettable choice, maybe not. Um, going into that, I definitely wished I did do it. But looking back over the past year, I think it's been pretty manageable for me to have um, not done that and be doing the courses while I'm working. Um, so it's not the end of the world if not able to do it. Um, but for me, so I started the program in September of 2019, where I did the core one module. Um, and then following that, I did core two, um, audit and performance management. So those are the four PEP courses to do. And um, I finished those in September and I've been on a bit of a break. Thank you. <laughs> um, been on a bit of a break and now I'm starting Capstone One in 10 days. Um, oh, I didn't know. Okay, so yeah. that's really interesting because when a student decides to take um, the PEP modules, and if they were in a firm, firms typically would like you to not take a module during the busy season. <clears throat> the busy season. So during um, like January, February, March. So mm -hmm. what most students end up doing is if they start in September, they take core one in the fall. And then where you took core two in the winter, um, they wouldn't be able to. So then they do core yeah. two in the spring. 
and then um, their their electives, so summer and fall. And then um, instead of starting capstone one in January, which you'll be doing like right at like January 31st, um, yeah. they would start it in May. So what's really interesting about this is being in an industry uh, allows you some flexibility to choose. And not saying that that flexibility maybe wouldn't be there in um, a firm. Um, I definitely would well, say it, that it's you're less, right, it wouldn't. Yeah, it's it, it, especially, you know, perhaps the larger ones, there's always exceptions. Mm -hmm. But in yeah. general, um, was it difficult for you to to talk with your employer or were they fairly um, flexible with you for when you wanted to take your modules? Um, no, it wasn't difficult for me at all. They were super open to it. Um, I started core one at the same time as a lot of my classmates from Dell, like um, with Ethan and Doug. I mean, we definitely did a few study sessions together. Um, but yeah, you're right. They are not at the same point in the modules as me now because they're at big four. So they had to take their um, breaks. And I so badly wish that they could have done it along with me and we could do the, the CFE studying sessions together. Um, but yeah, it was pretty simple for me. Brookfield is happy to accommodate. Um, CPA just added the May seating for the exam. I mean, the first option for that was supposed to be last year, um, but then obviously COVID happened. So they delayed the May seating and it was September again. So this is the first year where it's like, we have this option. Um, so actually who knows, maybe in the future, the firms would be open to it. I think this is actually just the first year that it's ever even been an option. Yeah, I mean, going back in history, I think um, it's definitely the first year in recent times. And now when we see it likely in the schedule going forward, there was a pilot back in 2015 and the firms also didn't do it. Or 2015 and 2016, there was one other time and it was mm -hmm. um, the firms chose not to kind of uh, allow for that. But you're right in the sense that there's the traditional audit, there's also audit risk, there's a lot more people going to tax and um, and kind of non-traditional, um, you know, straight up audit during. So yeah, no, I think that it's, who knows, who knows? And that's why it might be a little bit frustrating to be a student in third or fourth year to want to plan out everything. But at the same time, it's kind of cool that, um, that businesses are looking, adapting, being accommodating, being open mm -hmm. and saying, hey, like, we'll look at this. So yeah. I don't think that's a bad thing. It's, um, we no, tend to go, <laughs> yeah, we tend to go into accounting because I don't know, a lot of us are like, oh, we hear accounting, there's a lot of jobs, but you know, at the end of the day, you want one job, right? And then maybe you want another job after that. Um, and you mm -hmm. want to like learn and grow and challenge yourself. So it doesn't necessarily need to be this predetermined um, path. So in your day-to-day -day roles, um, role, how do you use accounting in your current gig? How do you use like accounting uh -huh. as you would have like learned it in third or fourth year or in the CPA? How do you use that in your day-to-day -day gig? Uh, a lot, actually. Um, so I feel like I apply things that I would have learned in like your class because um, I'm in the industry, right? So my role is corporate accountant, like I'm not doing audit. Um, so definitely apply my knowledge from university a lot. I mean, I'm booking debits and credits, which isn't only what my job is, um, but definitely am doing a lot of journal entries, um, do consolidations. I'm going to pause you there because you said two things. You're booking journal entries and you're doing consolidations. So um, I know I kind of, it wouldn't have I don't want to say I harped on uh, debits and credits or made them look negative, but they really are the building blocks. Like when I talk about it with my friends um, and, you know, from students and just everybody, like if you're trying to understand something, you go back to like, well, what's a debit? What's a credit? What, what my bucket does it go into? Does it make the bucket bigger? Does it make the bucket smaller? If you can bring it down to the basics, you understand how to build the story, how to, you know, communicate. So the fact that you are making building blocks and there and at the same time like doing the consolidations and seeing how everything fits together you know that's yeah. part of the story unfortunately in school or fortunately I think it's just part of it is like when you first look at things it's so like siloed 
And then when you get into industry, you're using those silos of knowledge and, you know, the starting of the integrating the building blocks and you're yeah. integrating into your, um, to op. so apologies for interrupting. I just really wanted to show the okay. connection because I find it isn't always clear, right? Um, like we spend a lot of time and stress doing one thing and then it's nice to kind of just really emphasize uh, this connection. Okay, so booking journal entries, understanding, doing consult doing consolidations, um, yeah, I mean, pretty high level. I'm not I'm definitely not like writing them out by hand like we were on exams. Um, we have some pretty like fancy software that takes a good amount of the work from us. But um, yeah, I mean, with the when it, what you're talking about with the basics, like there definitely are times where I'm literally drawing out my T chart and figuring it out. Um, but yeah, so we do, I do journal entries I'm responsible for I think at this point like 40 something of our um, smaller entities so on a monthly basis we do the um, like books for them we do the clothes and then um, prepare, preparing financial statements um, and then consolidating with all of our other um, listed issuers and um, putting out our annual and quarterly statements for public filing yeah it's a lot yeah, um, there's a lot of moving pieces for sure. Uh, it keeps us busy, but also kind of keeps it interesting. I mean, no two days are the same thing. I mean, it's, I know a lot of people like to um, maybe start working on a project and then over time see it come together. But for me, I feel like those big projects are a bit more rare in my role. Um, like everything I'm doing is like, needs to be done now and today, like getting our cash flows done, um, preparing, we call them step memos. So when it's um, like a big transaction, we'll be putting out all the, however many journal entries, sometimes it's three, sometimes it's 45, um, but it's always things that need to be done like relatively soon. Um, so it keeps it kind of like fast paced and exciting. Totally like exciting. It's not super thrilling, but like, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I get it though. You have a problem, you have your toolbox and then you have to like solve it. And there's not mm -hmm. a lot of time to, uh, kind of like think and digest. Like you have to have the tools kind of there and ready to kind of apply. So, you know, if you think long, you think wrong in a couple ways. Right. So whether yeah, it's, sure. <laughs> whether it's like one journal entry or 40 um, to kind of capture, hey, what happened with this transaction? How do we communicate that to our stakeholders um, in our the step memo? That's really, really cool. And I'm grateful that you, we, it was for everybody, we didn't talk about this <laughs> beforehand. I didn't ask for a plug for my class, but I'm super grateful. Um, thank you, because it is, it is tricky and it's, um, and we do, you know, typically focus on two companies, two or maybe three companies to smush together mm -hmm. and remove the difference. But that is applicable to whether it's two companies or 40 companies or, you know, it's, it's building blocks and it's understanding those fundamentals so that when the problem comes up, you can pull from that tool belt and say, okay, here you go. Or your big fancy software, you know, spits <laughs> out some numbers and you're like, wait a minute, like, where did that come from? Or, you know, hey, why was this different? Or, hey, this looks off. You know the background, what's in that software. So sure, you yeah. don't have to go through and it removes a lot of that manual. Um, and that actually links us to when sometimes people say, oh, like software is gonna eliminate your jobs. Um, what do you think about that? When people are like, oh, this this AI or this technology. I know I didn't prompt, I, we didn't talk about this before, <laughs> but it sounds like, if anything, it's what you have so far in software. It's helped remove some of that like nitty gritty um, to allow you to focus on the value add parts. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I mean, obviously in, in some industries, I feel like AI will replace um, the need for humans to complete a job, but I feel like at least in accounting, um, I mean, when a public company, I mean, you know this from, your experience in the industry, like the numbers, they have to be very accurate. Every single number has to be tied out and supported with backup and whatever. If anyone were to question it, we would have to be able to pull out the backup for it and explain it in the moment. So um, 
even though we have software that, you know, sometimes will book journal entries for us or sometimes will like do our consult, um, it, we still couldn't only rely on that. I mean, sometimes there's errors in it, sometimes it breaks sometimes, and like, we're the ones who have to find those issues and um, work through them, identify them, or even if there's just like numbers that no one knows how to explain, like we have to be able to go yeah. choose yeah. that number and go backwards and thread uh, through all of it and pull the back up and tie it out. So um, absolutely, in some ways, AI is definitely replacing us, but I feel like in ways that I'm okay with, like <laughs> taking away the uh, the work I don't want to do, basically. <laughs> No, I, I can absolutely see that. And it's funny because Naval uh, Ravenkant, um, I linked to him in previous uh, lectures um, and kind of wrap ups, but he says that like, being proficient in the language of business. Uh, so what Warren Buffett refers to as accounting, the language of business uh, and being able to communicate to different stakeholders. Like, yeah, you have the numbers, but this is what it means. Like that's the value of accountants and that's the value of you know, it, we're, if anything, just becoming more and more communicators, which I think if I were to think about when I was back in school, um, nobody was talking about the ability to communicate or, you know, the importance of communicating and accounting. And now I feel like that's, um, you know, first and foremost, cool, understand it, but what does it mean? How, like, why are we doing this? Not like, what does it look like, but why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, cool. that process also kind of helps us identify if there's been things missed or errors, right? Because when a number is there, even if it if it's right, why, what's this made up of? Or when we're doing that analysis, we'll realize, oh, actually that's wrong. Like it's missing something that's not in there or um, something's been double counted or something like that. So there's definitely things that just need human knowledge and power behind them. Totally, totally. Uh, so, okay, we know kind of where you where you came from. We know where you're at right now. Uh, what are your future plans or just options you're considering? Because um, leading into this, I really want to empower people to know that just because where you've been or where you are, it doesn't predetermine where you need to go. And I almost yeah. think the coolest thing about a Dell undergrad, um, as well as a CPA designation, is the you've earned the right to um, to choose and to have options mm -hmm. in front of you. So, what are some of those options or future plans that you're considering? Um, honestly, that is a question I've probably asked myself every day since I graduated, <laughs> um, and I, to be honest, just still don't know the answer. Like as you said, with CPA, um, once you have that designation, there will be so many opportunities and doors open um, that I just can't answer that question yet because I just don't know what is even going to be ahead of me. Um, but in terms of the options that I would be considering, um, I mean, one option that I do know is at Brookfield, the company I'm at right now, we have um, a long-term investment strategy, so that applies to our financial investments and they also apply it to, to their people. So they really invest a lot in us, um, especially when we just start at Brookfield, you know, they're supporting us through our CPA. Um, so they definitely see that as an investment they wanna see us grow with the company. Um, so they apply um, higher from within kind of strategy. Mm. Um, so there definitely are opportunities for promotion. Um, actually after I'm done my CPA, I'm lined up for a promotion. Um, so I know that I could stay at Brookfield and there would be a lot of opportunities for growth. And um, so, so, you know, maybe that's one option. Um, that's amazing. Another, I don't want to interrupt, but you. amazing. Congratulations. <laughs> that's, thank you I'm so much. glad that they recognized your hard work. Thank you. Um, yeah, they are definitely um, good at like recognizing us and acknowledging our efforts and um, they reward um, results, I guess. So once you get your CPA, it's you're they're happy to give a promotion. So um, that's one option I would be considering. Another is, um, you know, with CPA, like the designation doesn't only apply to finance and accounting, right? Um, it could apply to so many different avenues of 
business and so many different roles. Um, and you know, I like accounting right now, but do I love it? Uh, there could be something I love more. So who knows, maybe I would want to take my um, designation and down the road, apply it to something else. Um, another option would be with CPA, I feel like gives you a bit of um, comfort and freedom that, you know, you will be hireable. Um, so I feel like it kind of makes it a bit less risky, maybe if you wanted to, at, like at this age, um, at this point in my life and career, I feel like I would be able to maybe take some time and, you know, go travel or work on a passion project or, who knows, start my own business. Um, and then if I were to come back or my business were to fail or whatever it may be, I could most likely still be able to get a job or at least not be too far behind candidates who are applying for the same role, despite the fact that I'd had time off. Um, so yeah, I mean, who knows? There's so many options in front of me that it's almost a bit overwhelming, but um, I used to be <laughs> best about the fact that I didn't know like what the next few years of my professional life at least would be like, but as I've been getting closer and closer to finishing CPA, I feel like I've realized it's a, like almost a good problem to have. It's one of the privileges of becoming a CPA um, that you just have so many options. So like, Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I want to pinpoint something you said that even if you went out, pursued a passion project, or, you know, you took one of these, you know, quote unquote, like riskier things, the chances of being able to go backwards or back to what you left um, is likely going to be there. And I am, you know, this isn't about me, but that's, I remember being at a very similar point where there was something I wanted to do and a, and a bet I wanted to take and some very well-intended people telling me that I would be stupid to leave or I have to wait till this, you know, marker or I have to do this uh, a certain way. And I just remember, you know, just using my analysis for my accounting designation, you know, putting it down there and just being like, you know what, if not now, then when? And worse comes to worse comes to worse, can I come back to exactly where I am now? Probably. And that gave me the freedom to go bet on myself. And, you know, I'm on my third career essentially with one designation. And I'm really grateful that I both invested in myself um, to get the designation and then took the chance because, you know, as we're sitting here now, uh, you in Toronto, myself in Halifax, um, we are in January of you know, some, some fun lockdowns and, you know, things that we couldn't predict. Right. And yes, we're making the most out of it. Um, yes, we're both still smiling, but, um, it just kind of goes to highlight that there is no, there are no guarantees and that, you know, I don't know about you, Julia, but I don't know who's, who's more harmful or more impactful, the, the haters or the well-intended supporters. Right. And I, yeah, for sure. Cause people, people want, um, people have opinions and it's really important to listen to information, but also to make our own. So I'm very um, happy and proud and just delighted um, to hear, you know, you acknowledge that with this hard work, you've earned options and that um, you put yourself in a really good place with Brookfield. Um, but also, you know, hey, it's a, it's a big world and it's not saying you're preparing to leave, but just really grateful for the op opportunities that both Brookfield and CPA have provided. And a little bit about you, um, <laughs> would you say that one of your passions um, or interests outside of accounting would be uh, like fashion? Um, yeah, I would say I'm like trendy. Per yeah. Se. <laughs> and something that didn't come up would be, you know, for example, some people like sports. There's an opportunity to mesh, you know, sports and accounting or sports and CPA, or just, you know, take the skills that you have from CPA and go to sports. Do you mm -hmm. see similar things with, um, with fashion or, or marketing in the sense, um, with the CPA? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, I feel like, like I'm trying to think right now of a role that having a CPA designation would not be applicable to. Um, it could I mean, at least in business, like it could really, not all of it. I mean, in some, if you're working in marketing, you're not going to need to know debits and credits and 
necessarily how to prepare a financial statement, but um, CPA definitely prepares you with the fundamental tools to apply to any kind of business role. I mean, we do stuff on like strategy and um, ethics and just kind of like the back end side of um, business things. So totally. yeah, I feel like you could really apply it to like any business role, whether it be in the finance industry or elsewhere. Totally. Uh, and I had one former student who was an MBA uh, and she went into, she was in my class class and went into a marketing role and said that she could speak to, you know, the ROI, you know, Hey, if you invest, mm -hmm. you know, X thousands of dollars here, here's my projected ROI. So just being able to understand and kind of speak to numbers confidently is a huge, huge, um, like boost to your skill set, um, one skill set. So Absolutely. Coming back to this, what advice would you have right now for current DAL accounting majors or would-be accounting majors, third or fourth year uh, DAL students? Mm, I think I would just say to take your time um, in terms of being stressed about figuring out your agenda for the next however many years. Um, as we've seen over this past year, like things can change. Like you never know what's going to happen. We might all be stuck in our houses for a whole year and not be able to travel. Like plans might shift. Um, so just take your time in figuring things out. Don't get too set on any one idea or one avenue of things. Um, there's no right way and wrong way to go about your professional career. Um, that would be my advice. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> take, take your time, breathe. You don't have to have it all figured out. Um, yeah. I think you said, you know, or implied heavily that you don't have it all figured out for the rest of your, you know, 70 plus, plus, plus 40 plus. Absolutely plus, plus, not, you know, confirmed that I don't have anything figured out. <laughs> and I, I will say neither do I, and that's yeah. part of the fun, <laughs> right? If somebody said, Hey, here's your life and like work backwards, I'd be like, Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, even if it was amazing or it continues to be amazing, um, it's mm -hmm. like, oh, the part of the fun is figuring it out and giving people yeah. time and space. So thank you for giving them permission because you know how it feels to, to feel that pressure. Definitely. Um, I think I was probably maybe the most stressed student of yours, as you know, in my fourth year, I was pretty overwhelmed by the idea of the unknown of the next couple of years but um yeah just embrace the unknown yeah and um I would say that you definitely weren't alone so don't um <laughs> <laughs> but it's I nice uh, it's, <laughs> even it's nice now I realize <laughs> like when speaking to my friends and like my former classmates a lot of us are in the same boat. Um, like we're in our first role out of university and our entry level, you know, we're working towards getting our CPA or maybe we have already done that so, but um, none of us know like what we wanna do or where we wanna go with it. Maybe a few, but no one that I know of. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's pretty normal to just be figuring it out as you go and time will tell. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Hey, Julia, how do you define success? Um, I think I define success by probably happiness. Um, I wouldn't consider success to be something measured by like monetary values um, or material things, like, or even like your role title. Um, or your salary or whatever. I feel like it's really just in your own head. Um, I mean, if you're happy, you're successful to me at least. Um, so I think that's how I would define success. I like that. <laughs> We're all on our own journeys and we gotta make our own goals. Um, I mean, there's definitely, I guess it depends how you look at it. Like once you achieve a goal that you set for yourself, that's success too. Like there's so many different ways to look at it, but I think that would make you happy. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> in the big picture, like long run, 
um, to be like, I lived a successful life, like when I'm an old woman, I would say I've lived a successful life if I was happy. Um, I love that. I love that. Do you have any final comments, uh, items that you want to tell uh, our, our third and fourth years? Um, I would just say, like, don't stress, uh, you know, embrace the unknown, take your time, everything will fall into place, but um, hard work definitely pays off. So, I mean, there's no harm in planning ahead a little bit, but just don't be too set on anything because you don't want to be devastated if plans change, but. Um, just... Or something better comes off. Could you imagine being so focused on one thing and then something better comes and you're just looking over here and all your focus has been here and because somebody told you that you should be or that, you know, and something else comes up, like, yeah, you put in the hard work. So enjoy being able to see what comes. Yeah, definitely. Like, as you said um, before that, like we earned, almost earned maybe our right to um, have so many opportunities that come with uh, earning the CPA designation or, you know, just even having your undergrad degree. Um, and there are so many opportunities in front of all of us, um, many that we don't even know about yet. So yeah, don't be too sad on one thing. Don't close the doors. Um, you've earned the right to explore the options for sure. Perfect. Love it. Thanks, Julia. <laughs> You're welcome.